Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop for part two of the uh, custom pulley build for one of our customers at work. Uh, again, it's for a wood and tree chipper for, uh, yeah, the little diesel engine that's on it. Um, the water pump had failed, uh, damaged the pulley that was on there. Uh, could, we could find one in the catalog, but nobody had one and even if we could, they were ridiculously expensive. So. Uh, uh, last time we got started on uh, on the machining of it and getting uh, everything in order uh, and this this is the video where we finish it up so I hope you find it interesting now in the bottom here um, I mean this being a cast piece the angle here is going to be the draft from the pattern um, I'm going to try to put that angle in just because it'll make it look cool anyway and I, I, partly also because I don't know how much clearance there is on this, this inside bore to the actual housing of the pump um, again, I haven't seen the pump, and apparently there wasn't much of the pump left, judging, well, not surprised, but given the damage. Um, I do have a set of uh, inside uh, calipers, um, again, gotten out of one of those uh, assorted bins uh, from eBay, and KAP are the initials on it, LS start uh, unit here, um, same initials that are actually scratched into the uh, micrometers that uh, Anthony Brown won the other day. So, must have come out of an estate sale or something. If anybody knows who KAP was, or is, or whatever, it'd be kind of cool to know. But, just this diameter here. There we go. Just, so it just touches. And again, there's a little bit of a radius in the bottom there anyway. Just, it'll just snugly touches on the way by. 3 inch 185. Okay, now for the boring part. I mean, yeah, I know the joke's been overdone, but it is actually the boring part um, of the part. Now, I needed a nice big hole to get this boring bar in, because this is my big chunky one. And I'm still hoping I have enough clearance to get it in there. We'll see. Um, <laughs> it's nip and tuck. It's got a metric scale on my side where I can see it, um, and 50 millimeters right about there. 50 millimeters is close enough to two inches. That's what I'm, I'm going to use as my stop point. So it's going to take a while. I'll probably do the first few passes here and then bring you in when I'm close to the end. So yeah, I'm going to have to start carving away inside here. Um, it, again, it isn't very flat because I've just been making successive uh, boring passes. We'll use the boring bar like a facing tool. Hopefully it doesn't strain too badly. So yeah, oh yeah, we're not even to two inches deep yet there. So I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to keep going with this. All right, now the surface finish in there isn't spectacular, but it's also just been roughing. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. If you can make that out there, we have three inch, well, sorry, two, uh, two point, well, basically three, two, five. We have another, well, well, just a shy of two, five, but we have another basically ten thousandths to come off. Finish facing that, uh, facing there to depth, and then we'll cut our uh, tapered bore, and then uh, maybe a little relief on this side of the pulley. Yeah. 
333 thousandths. We're within a thousandth. I'll call that good. So the next step is to deal with this uh, taper in here. The taper is actually draft from casting. So, I mean, we'll uh, get the angle off of that, set the compound and start cutting it out. So as far as finding the angle inside this uh, pulley for the draft, uh, I found the easiest way to deal with it is just take one of the angle blocks and uh, I set my little, well, my little square inside, take the angle block, and that one there fits pretty well, right against the side of the pattern or side of the bore. It is a four degree. So we have four degrees worth of draft on here. We're going to make a four degree taper on the inside of that bore. So yeah, for, I have the, now have the compound set to four degrees. I'll just use the compound to cut that, uh, to cut that taper inside. We have that um, internal face that we faced off to the uh, 3.2 diameter. Inside the pulley, the original, there they have a machined um, face inside there, which is you know within you know 20 thou of what we did. Again, that part's not critical. But if you look, there's that step where the casting uh, made a uh, radius in the bottom there, and then started coming out in the four degree angle. Um, I was trying to approximate it in the base of this simply because I. Don't know, I don't know where, what the water pump uh, has as far as clearance to the pulley. And uh, the guys at the shop were looking around, we were trying to find the core, uh, like the old water pump, couldn't find it. So I'm just going to, that one's more of a free form, freehand thing. I'm just going to approximate it as best I can. The other thing, speaking of free forming, uh, there's this, well, where the casting comes up, the wall of the actual uh, V is not that thick. Uh, they've relieved on the, or well, it's relieved just by the casting on the back side here. I don't know if that would interfere if it was too, if it was straight across like mine is. I don't know if that would interfere with any of the reinforcing webs on the water pump casting. So what we'll do is we'll just we'll freeform that guy too. So I just took a quick measurement on here, eyeball measurement with a protractor. This is about a 20 degree angle in there. As far as I'm concerned, that should be pretty close as far as uh, you know relief profile. There, that's not sharp. But that'll work just fine. All right, I have gotten the uh, part now dialed in. I'm just using some pieces of eighth-inch aluminum underneath the jaws to avoid messing up the uh, edges of the pulley. Um, it is cranked in nice and tightly so that uh, it uh, hopefully it doesn't slip. Um, again, we try to spray for Murphy as much as possible and keep him out of here. Um, the reason I put this uh, shoulder in where I did is that way I could use, uh, well, I don't have one of those little adapters to use a, a uh, regular indicator at 90 degrees with a little pivot. So I just use my dial test indicator and I mean, it'll, it'll work. So as I turn it, it's reading one, one and a, almost two, one and a half. That's our uh, face run out. There we go. But so about maybe about seven tenths on there. And then uh, you probably can't see it in there just because of the glare and the angle. But I am within within a thousandth uh, radially. So that will be acceptable. I did find out the other day that this uh, little unit is actually a Perkins diesel in this thing. So it's metric. I'm starting to make a bit more sense with some of the numbers. Um, the, especially since the inside of the bore there is 
20, well, just a smidge over 20 millimeters. So that uh, center uh, locating nub on the water pump itself must be 20 millimeters. So as long as we cut it to 20 millimeters and, well, five tenths or whatever, or five hundredths rather, uh, ish, then uh, we should be able to line up correctly. That means we're looking about 788, 789 thousandths. So that means we need to take, what, 160 thousandths out. Time for the dinky little boring bar. I like it. Perfect. Ha ha! Little man agrees. Ha ha! Ha! I don't know if you can hear him in the background there. Ha ha! <laughs> oh man. Now because the next step involves hogging all of this material down, um, to support it, what I've done is I've added the center. It just fits in that 20 millimeter hole. Just give it a bit of support, make sure it stays in the chuck and doesn't come flying out at me because I'm only holding it with the aluminum even though it's cramped down nice and tight. So yeah, that's basically what I have to do to bring this down to roughly a larger diameter on this taper. <laughs> you don't want to watch me do all that. <laughs> Before I've roughed down, I still have whatever it is, four inch hundred thousands, four inch two hundred thousand, something like that, on the outside diameter of the parallel turning I'm doing for roughing. Now, as far as um, the di diameter I'm going to, my target diameter is going to be right about the same as what we have here. So at the um, at the point where I'm laying the sides of the jaws from the caliper against the uh, front face of this uh, V-groove flange here, we have 3 inch 950 roughly. I'm going to make the one on the lathe about 400 thousandths and then um, as far as the, and th then we can start cutting the angle on it, 4 degree angle. It should theoretically make this wall a little bit thicker. Now as far as uh, wall thickness, um, to be able to measure it, because I can't get a caliper in there or whatever to get around this way on the lathe, what I did do was check to see how thick the front surface is from the... Uh, we haven't cut this little nubby yet, that uh, small journal there that locates the uh, fan blades, but um, the distance between this front face and this inside face is 488 thousandths. So if we roughly come back a half an inch from the face of the piece that's in there, because I'm going to cut this face last, then take this measurement, subtract 2 inch 188, and then divide that number by 2, that'll give us our wall thickness. This, uh, because the pulley's broken, I can actually get this tool around into it. This is a micrometer, I star it as well, but uh, this one here um, was another one of the ones that came out of one of those um, uh, multiple mix lots, etc. sort of things. I was originally going to put this in as a draw prize because, okay, I got, uh, I got one inch micrometers. Then I realized the anvil's rounded on the one end. So this is excellent for being able to make thickness measurements on round objects. And yes, I realize that it's a rough casting, so it's only going to be an approximation. However, it's still better than nothing. And the thickness of the wall because the, because the, the uh, pulley's broken, I can actually get the uh, micrometer on. We're looking at roughly 200, roughly 225 thousandths thickness on the wall. All right, let's cut that front taper.
All right. Now, I know that it's not as shiny as it was before, but this is way smoother. I could have used it at the other uh, finish as a uh, nail file. We have two more steps to go. We have to do the uh, front face now, and then um, drill the four holes, and we're good to go. Facing on the front also involves cutting this uh, little nub here on the front, this, little, this journal, and that's where this sits on. This is the aluminum spacer that goes between the uh, water pump pulley and the fan blade assembly. And so this actually, you know, I can feel a little bit of rattling there, but that basically just has to have a slip-on fit to that journal there, or that uh, bore. Now that bore is 1 inch 184, otherwise known as just a smidge over 30 millimeters. All right, so now, as long as our little hub fits nicely on there, at least as good, it fits at least as good on there, or as well on there as it does on the, on the uh, regular piece, original. The only thing is I'm gonna have to undercut that shoulder just a little bit at the, at the base, because the radius there is just a smidge too big. So I want to make sure it sits flush. There we go. Now it doesn't rock. So now it's time to set up our uh, tool post drill jig. I'm going to use it to set my. Uh, I'm going to use it to cut the bolt or bolt hole pattern. Now I have my um, tool post unlocked. I've got the uh, dovetail unlocked. The nose of the drill chuck just pokes into the. Uh, into the hole there and have just enough uh, room to get it in there. I'll tighten up my tail stock by tightening up the tail stock and then tightening up the dovetail. Snug it, snug you. Theoretically, I should be able to pack my tail stock off and not have any movement. Snug, 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 set you back you off. There we go. Now this is assuming that this import chuck has reasonable amount of uh, centric concentricity between the taper machined on the front of the chuck jaws here and where the or chuck jaws uh, we're on the front of the chuck here and um, the jaws themselves. <clears throat> now it's a 50 millimeter um, a 50 millimeter bolt pattern, um, <laughs> four bolts to, or four bolt holes. I have four chuck jaws. I have it set up with the uh, redneck indexing system. I have a small block of aluminum under here, underneath the uh, teeth for the, um, for the rack, for the carriage. I'm just using the same, I'll make sure I use the same parallel wedged under the jaws, piece of aluminum, clamp. Hey, it's redneck, but at least I'm using a classy English uh, record brand clamp made in Sheffield, England. So, now, now a 50 millimeter bolt pattern gives us one inch 969 as far as, or whatever, one inch 968, one inch 969 for a um, uh, for a inch diameter of it, because again, I'm using inch tooling. So that's diameter divided by two gives us 984 thousandths. Okay, so now theoretically, I have a uh, my dial indicator set up here. I should be able, to, I have it reading zero. I should be able to back my carriage back 984 thousandths or the cross slide rather. If I bring it back 984 thousandths, 984, we should be good. All right, so I have the cross slide uh, locked at 984 thousandths from center. 
that should be our bolt hole pattern. So we'll need to uh, spot the hole, spot drill, add a little bit of motion lotion to the bushings. But I may actually, just for kicks and giggles, try using the carriage as the, you know, to, to feed the, the uh, pressure. No, maybe not. I don't want to knock the setting off. There we go. We're spotted. Oh, buddy, you haven't been down that long for your nap. I sometimes have to just give him a few minutes, see what he does. Sometimes he'll squeak for a little bit and then go back to sleep right away. There. Now the holes are nine millimeter holes. I don't have a nine millimeter drill bit. So 1130 seconds is as close as I'm gonna be able to get. A little bit of the motion lotion, or cutting motion lotion, I guess. There we are. I'll probably do the other three off of camera. Uh, you've seen me use this thing before, and you know the basic idea how it works. Um, yeah, I'll bring you back in in a bit. Deeper the holes. There we are. I'm going to still have to uh, deburr the inside holes, but otherwise, apart from that, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much content with the end product. I think my, uh, I think our customer will be too. So yeah, uh, we came out in the end with a uh, fully functional pulley. I'm actually fairly happy with the end result. I think it looks decent. Um, I'm not sure what we'll do as far as uh, surface finish on it, because again, this is just raw steel. Um, whether we're going to paint it, or I don't know if my boss has a line on somebody with a powder coating set up, but we'll see. Anyway, yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out. Certainly in better shape than that guy, that's for sure. And... Uh, I would bet probably a fair amount stronger. Um, if this machine eats the water pump again, my suspicion is the pulley won't take the brunt of it this time. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, thank you to all of you who've subscribed. If you haven't, well, ha thanks for coming by and you know passing on through. Um, I do appreciate all the likes and the comments for whoever wants to join in. That's it's awesome. But uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, appreciate all the support everybody's given me um, and the little channel here. And I'm hoping that as time goes on, the stuff that happens here stays interesting for you. It really is just me messing around with stuff in my garage like I normally would, just with a camera over my shoulder. So, thanks again. See you next time.